Morning everyone, welcome back to the garage. I have some eBay orders to pull and I appreciate you coming by to watch that. Had an interesting experience with the uh, post office recently. <laughs> Again, typical, typical, always having interesting postal experiences. <sighs> we did pack up all our whatnot orders, so those are good to go. You can see them on the ground here already. I went sourcing yesterday with my mom and we found some cool stuff. It was nice to go out with Mama Picker. It's been a couple weeks since I've been out with her. And uh, yeah, man, the community sales. <laughs> I gotta love the community sales. They're not all year, but when they come, they're fun. We we did really good in pretty much everywhere we went. There was a community sale. I had a list of them. It didn't really matter though, because just driving around, you see community after community having big sales. So that was fun. I did find some cool items. I think, you know, let me see. One of my favorites, probably this Jim Shore Angel thingy look at this thing can i zoom in there is a way i don't remember how hey, right there look <laughs> fancy that jim shore angel thing it's like two feet tall and uh, it's worth like 200 bucks so that was a pretty cool find i paid 15 dollars for it not all jim shore is great but that's a good one i'm uh, clearing out some space because the stuff i sold was really huge oh this broke uh, i got this this weekend but it looks like it broke that's not good I don't know if it's worth anything either. anyways. I just thought it was kind of neat. A lot of big items sold. Uh, and then there was one day, I think it was Friday, where everything that was selling was just huge and expensive. Uh, but then recently, these last couple days, my sales have been slower and smaller and lower. Oh, wow, this sold already. <laughs> Jeez, I underlisted this, I think. One of the things I found yesterday, I was very proud of myself because, you know, all the jewelry mess that we've been talking about these last couple weeks, I was like, you know, jewelry sucks. I don't want to do jewelry anymore. But I was like, at the community sales, I was like, I'm going to at least look at the jewelry tables, right? And see if I see anything that might be decent that I should grab. And at like the third sale I went to, I saw this. And I was like, man, H, that seems like it could be Hermes, if I'm fancy. And I was like, but I don't know. It also could be just some garbage. But then I looked inside it, and sure enough, right here in the back, it says Hermes. There's a little mark right on the back there. This thing's kind of cool. Like, the H moves. Can I make it happen? Kind of losing my voice for no apparent reason. I feel fine. I'm just losing my voice. Yeah, like, it opens up. The H, like, kind of goes over, and it opens up. My mom thinks. She's like, that looks familiar. I think that might have something to do with the Apple Watch Hermes edition. Like, they had a bundle that included it or something. Apparently, my mom knows this brand. She was in the car. She had already given up. But I found this. Asked the lady how much, and she said $2. And I was like... Okay, I'll take it for $2. I listed it yesterday. Based on comps, it was a little confusing because like that one's black and silver. There was like orange and silver, things like that listed for a lot, like 189, 200, things like that. But the solds for this, a lot of them said like 120 best offer. So I listed mine at 129. The other ones that were listed currently like that were more like 160, 170. And it sold overnight while I was sleeping. So $2 into $129. My other fancy find that I found was this. I thought this was really cool. This is a necklace compact. <laughs> I'm a jewelry guy now. And I opened it up and it's actually an Estee Lauder thing, but it's not worth like, it's worth like 20 bucks, not hundreds. I thought for a minute that I had scored big. Either way, the uh, community sales were really fun. I enjoyed them. Let me see, can I turn on this like, I'm like a little low energy right now. <laughs> Cause something else happened too. All right, so let's see, how do I tell all these stories? So Friday, I was out here and I was being a productive and useful here. Okay. I went off. <laughs> Let me explain. And I think this almost like it needs to happen from time to time. I think it's important that you let stuff like this happen, especially if you're full time, you have to sometimes just be like, no, I'm taking a break today. And I think that's kind of what happened. Like I was in the, I was talking to Tina, it was Thursday and I was out here working and I was editing and like my brain was like just fried. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. And I had edited like a whole picker video and you know, I had listed a little bit that day and I was just like, man, I'm struggling. Like I, I really want to just go take a day off. And Tina's like, well, why don't you go take a day off? Go to Disney or something. You haven't been to a theme park in a long time. And I was like, that would be really nice. They already had plans, but the girls didn't. So I asked Callie and Anna when they woke up, I said, hey, you want to just go over to Disney? And they said, yes. And so me and Anna and Callie left the house at like 11, 15 to go to Magic Kingdom. And we spent the whole day there, me and Callie. We got home at like 11. We had an awesome day. It was super fun. I didn't even record anything. I did. I recorded a couple things for my uh, my theme park channel. Just some shorts, some funny shorts, some moments, basically. But I didn't like do a vlog. I just wanted a day off of not doing any like work-related stuff. Just having fun with the girls, and I did. And but the, here's the problem. 
once you like kick yourself out of work mode and into vacation mode, which is kind of what I did that day, I've had trouble getting back on the ball. Like Friday, I really struggled with productivity. I was sitting out here and listing, but I wasn't listing very fast and I was kind of like not into it. And I think I listed like 16 items and Tina came out and she's like, hey Dave, look at these yard sales. And I was like, oh, let's go do that. That sounds more fun, which I guess is still working. It's still working. Uh, but that's not, I don't really need inventory. So it's maybe not what I should be focused on. But me and Tina went and did some yard sales real quick, like an hour and a half or something. And uh, <clears throat> while I was at the yard sales, I got a bag of tools, which I thought would be better, but it was okay. I paid $3 for the bag of tools. This was in here and it sold already. I listed it when I got home that afternoon. And star it combination square, S-T-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. I know it's not fun looking through tools, but they didn't have much at this yard sale except for tools. And I saw that star it name there, which is a very good name. And so I grabbed it, $3 for the bag of tools. That was in there, sold it already for 26 plus shipping. And then this as well, this is like a micrometer, like a fine measurement tool. It's Lufkin, which is another good brand. I saw those two. That's literally why I bought the bag was those two items. I was hoping there was more in there. But there really wasn't anything. There was a nice measuring tape that I'm going to keep. This one, this little tough boy, which sells for like 12, but I'm going to keep it because it's nice and small. And it also had a um, one of these, which you know, check my tire pressure, just kind of useful. So those two things I wanted for myself, and then I knew I could sell those two things, and the rest of it kind of ended up being meh, kind of garbage stuff. But I did sell that for 26, and I sold this already too. I might have listed both of these a little low. I should have asked Blood, Sweat, and Sell Leroy. He would have told me what to list them for. I listed that one for 17, the little micrometer thingy. So 17, 26 from the $3 bag, like $43 from $3 on that flip. And that was on Friday. That was on Friday because I was struggling to list. I also have been like addicted to this audio book, which has like definitely been impacting my productivity a little bit. And I think I already told you guys, it's uh, Stormlight Archives. If you like fantasy, it's a it's a good book. It took a long time to get into, but now that I'm into it, I can't, I can't put it down. Well, it's an audio book, so I can put it down, but I get a little, I'm less productive maybe when I listen to it because I'm like into the book. Uh, where is this item? I sold a train. Problem is I've got purse overload. I've been buying a lot of purses and it's like encroaching on my train stuff. All right, I sold this train. I had a minute. It took me a minute to get it out, but pretty sure I got this at that uh, flea across Florida sale I just went to. Actually, a viewer sold me a big thing of train stuff for like 10 bucks and that was in there. Sold that for $40 plus shipping on eBay. $35.99, I took a best off. Sorry, granny called me. Uh, anyways, so I sold that train for $35.99. I sold another one of these Blu-ray players. These are moving fast. $17 is clearly the price point for them. They're kind of a sunk cost at this point, so it's pretty much pure, pure profit. BD3700. No power cord, no remote. $17.99 plus ship. I do need to spend some time listing some AV stuff. I have a bunch of new stuff I've been getting at yard sales recently that I should probably uh, list. Okay, so let's see. I sold a Barbie. But yeah, anyways, we went, there was a reason I was telling you this whole story and it's something to do with Friday. Can I now remember what it was? Oh yes, okay, so hold on, I'm getting there. I'm landing the plane mentally. I'm not quite there yet. There was something Friday that impacts, oh yes, last night. Okay, I got there. <laughs> Gotta wrangle the brain in sometimes. Okay, so this is what happened. While we were out yard sailing, me and Tina on Friday, we went to an estate sale too. The estate sale had like nothing almost. I, I think I bought one long a burger basket. That was it. There wasn't really much there, but there was one thing. Uh oh, that's not the right Barbie. Did I ship the wrong Barbie the other day or do I have two of that one? Interesting, interesting. Oh yeah, I do have another one. So we're at the estate sale and I notice, and this is gonna gross some people out. Get prepared to be grossed out. Not everyone is like, okay with this. Me and Tina, you know, when we first got married, I was making $250 a week and she was working at Chick-fil-A for multiple years. So we we know how to live with no money, okay? And some of those living with no money, I think her paycheck was like, so we, you know, we lived with like, you know, there was months where we'd come home and we'd have 1500 bucks, right? For the whole month. That that was like not, <laughs> we, we've, we know how to have no money, right? So one of the habits we picked up when we had no money was buying our furniture used. We do not buy our furniture new. I sold this on eBay. Disney, Barbie fun. I think if there's one place that I can talk about, you know, buying used furniture and it not being like grossed out, people being grossed out is here in the picker community. Cause we all know that, you know, used is good. Used is fine. Used is a good way to save money. 
twenty dollars plus shipping for that Barbie, even with the bad packaging. It's it's more if you have that with good packaging, it's like a forty dollar Barbie. Oh, you guys are gonna be so proud of me with what I sold next. Well, anyways, all that to say, I go pretty far when it comes to use. Like pretty much all my furniture is either used or built by Dave. You know, because I build. You know, I used to build a lot of stuff with woodworking. I don't really anymore, but. I used to build a lot of items. And so it's either built by Dave. Where did I put this? I just listed it, but I don't know where I put it. I don't really have a good section for this. Hmm. Think, Dave. I feel like it should be over here, but I don't see it. must be over here. So all that to say, guys, I'm okay with used. Used everything. Used couches, used beds, used anything. Uh, anything to save a buck on furniture, because I don't like spending a lot of money on it. I think part of that comes from, like... When me and Tina first, first got married and we're like still living with my parents because we lived with my parents while married for a little bit. We were really, really bad with money and we went and financed a couch. And we, you know, bought this couch on credit and oh my gosh, it was like one of those like sham deals where it says like no interest at all for the first two years. But then there was this huge bill of interest that was added in at the end because we hadn't paid for it at all. Anyways, so after that, we decided used furniture is going to be our lifestyle. <sighs> I cannot find this item. Where would I have put it? David, where would you have put this? And I just dropped something that I need to pick up. I literally just listed this like two days ago, so I know it's in here. Anyways, let me check one more place. Wait, I think I found it. I think I found it. I did. Haha, <laughs> clothing, guys. I sold clothing. This is a Nike track suit. Nike track suit I paid $5 for at a yard sale. See, it's like Nike dry fits uh, the, you know, the jumper, the top, and the bottom, the pants. And it's t double XL. That's why I bought it. Two XL tracksuit. I figured I definitely could sell that. Uh, and I did for $36 plus shipping. And it sold really fast, like in a day or two. And my picture was terrible. It's literally just like it laying on the concrete out there on the driveway. <laughs> but still, five into 36. And maybe I should list the starter ones too, because I got two starter sets as well. But I just figured the Nike would sell really easy. And I might put the starter sets through whatnot, so I don't have to photograph them and measure them. Oh my gosh, I'm taking a while to land the plane on Friday. I get to this estate sale, and at the estate sale, I see a sleep number bed. Okay, so <laughs> sleep number bed for sale. Now, you know, backstory a little bit. Our bed is, you know, pretty bad at this point. It's one of those, like, basically Amazon bed in a bag things, and we've had it for 10 years, uh, which I guess was something we bought new. So there's that. Our frame was used, but we did buy that new, and I think it was, like, $300 when we got it. It was very cheap, uh, and we've been using it for, like, 10 years. And, you know, weirdly enough, we've had a lot of back pain. Now, I will say, and some of you are going to be, like, all for this, the sales pitch of every mattress company, because we've gone to mattress stores, which there's way too many of them, by the way. We've gone to mattress stores. Stores. since we bought this bed and looked at mattresses and always been like nah you know it's too much too much too much but their sales pitch all these mattress people is always the same like oh you spend one third of your life on your bed you should spend five million dollars on a mattress that's that's what they say and i'm just like nah <laughs> i'm good so i'm sure some of you watching will agree with that sentiment and probably you're sleeping on twelve thousand dollar beds that is a real thing people sleep on beds that expensive and that's fine but you know for me i'm a cheapskate so me and tina have been wanting a new bed but like literally our budget has been like 500 bucks for a new bed we don't want to spend a lot on a new bed but we do want a new bed this thing sold this is a you know i got this at the same sale as a nike tracks tracksuit scan snap s 1300i i think this is just like literally a scanner yeah it's a scanner fujitsu scanner to scan documents with the cords sold that over on ebay for 53.99 that was also five bucks at that same sale. Everything was five bucks at that sale. So 36, so I spent 10 and brought in like 80 from those two items. Anyways, the point being, they had this bed and I was like, oh wow, a sleep number bed. And it was marked $300, king size sleep number bed for $300 with two remotes. Now, of course the flipper in me instantly thinks, ooh, the remotes for sleep number beds sell for like $75. See, this is something I know. And when I saw them, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they just sell me the remotes for a buck, or a buck a piece and I could sell them online. And then I was like, no, because it showed that it was with two remotes. And then I was like, you know, honestly, maybe I should just get this bed. Me and Tina have been wanting a new bed. It's a king size bed. 300 bucks for a sleep number with two remotes. That's like, just the remotes would cost me 150 bucks normally. So I was like, very tempted by that. <clears throat> this sold, this is a Auric vacuum charger and battery. Sold that over on eBay for 30 bucks. Sold that for my mom. I uh, gave her the money for it, 30 bucks. It was something she had bought for her vacuum and didn't need it anymore because the vacuum broke. 
I'm such a cheapskate that I was like, nah, I don't want to pay 300 for it. That's too much. I said, I want to get it on half off day because when I stayed sale, I said, if they still have it on half off day tomorrow, at the end of the day, I'll come get it for 150 or I'll talk them down from 150. That way I know that if I don't like the bed, I can just sell the remotes and get my money back. That's literally how my brain works. I think a lot of you have a similar brain. Sold 3 snaps for 30 bucks a piece on eBay. Uh, one actually was to Becky, a viewer. She sent me an offer for 25 that I accepted, but the other two went for 30. So I was yard selling all this. I mean, this story is not even that good, but it's just a story I want to tell. You know, I just want to tell my story. <laughs> and you, you're listening to it. So thank you. So, you know, I was out with Mama Picker yard selling, and I was telling her about this bed. And I said, you know, cause she's talking to Yay, her twin sister. Everyone loves Yay. Uh, Yay just can't do. People ask me a lot, like, what's going on with Yay? What's going on with Yay? So if you guys don't remember, Yay. I uh, got run over by her own car about a year ago today. April. Yeah, she got run over by her own car because she like, be careful out there, guys. Uh, this is like, it's almost happened to me, right? She got in her car, put it in park, or took it out of park for to put it in drive, then remembered something she had forgotten and gets out of her car without putting it back in park, and the car drives over her. And she broke her back, basically, and had to go to surgery and all this stuff. She was in physical therapy. Thankfully, she's pretty much all better now. She doesn't even have pain anymore, which the doctor said would never happen. It's kind of miraculous. But I actually caught myself doing that the other day. <laughs> Literally did it when Brandon was here. I took my car, put it in drive, and I started to get out because I forgot something on the roof. I like left something on the, like a cup on the roof. And I was like, oh crap, I'm gonna do a yay yay. And so I had to get back in and put it in park really quick. But that's, you know, it's dangerous. Be careful, make sure that your car is in park. You know, it's a public safety announcement. Anyways, <laughs> oh, my ADHD is bad this morning. A Blade Ping Putter, $20 plus ship over on eBay sold. Just got this recently at the highway flea across Florida sale. So my mom said, oh my gosh, $300, that's an insane deal. Cause I'm telling her about this bed. And I said, Ma, at the end of today, I wanna go back over to this estate sale because they have this bed I kinda want. And she, when she heard it, she's like, why didn't you buy it? That's an insane deal. Your Aunt Ye just bought one for 750 at an estate sale on half off day. I can't believe you didn't buy it because like, I guess they, she had also been wanting a new bed recently. <laughs> And she found one for 1500 waited till half off day and bought it for 750 Same bed pretty much. Except hers adjusts like lifts up like hospital bed style. Mine doesn't do that. But anyways, she was freaking out. My mom always goes up to like me and my mom, honestly, and maybe some of you too. Like anything goes wrong, we instantly like jump up to like maximum uh, freak out mode. Oh my gosh, I lost my phone. I'll never have a phone again. And like, it turns out it's in your pocket. Like that's the kind of thing me and my mom do a lot. Yeah, he does it too. Anyways, I sold the Swamp Thing with the attachment from the 90s. This is a cool one. Uh, $15.99 plus shipping. I bought that in a tote of action figures that someone brought to the flea market. $65. Didn't do amazing on that action figure tote. A lot of it was bad condition. Like this one here. He's in bad shape. But there was a few pieces in there that'll save me. I think two that I listed for $30, one that I listed for $50, and this guy. And I paid 65, so I'm gonna do okay. I'm gonna like almost triple my money and then I'll sell the rest of the stuff, probably on Whatnot in a big lot, you know, cause it just wasn't as good. Uh, there is a few pieces that I'll put on Whatnot that were in pretty good condition, but I don't know, maybe I'll get 200 out of the $65 too. So I won't do bad, but yeah, so she was freaking out. So I said, well, listen, if Yay -A is out garage selling, cause a lot of times she will go out garage selling. She just doesn't come with me and Mama Picker cause we go out for six hours. And she doesn't, after the accident, she doesn't have the energy to do that, to sit in the car for six hours, jump out to garage sales constantly. Like, it's a lot of work, you guys know. Uh, so Yay doesn't really have the energy to do it. So she doesn't come with us for the long days. But I said, if she's out garage selling, have her go see if they still have the bed, because my mom didn't think we should wait till the end of the day. C3PO sold, this is like a 90s. It holds your action figures. I got it at the flea market, 25 bucks for that in Darth Vader. Sold Darth Vader for 15, sold that for 26. Kind of a terrible flip. But I'm gonna move on because you know sometimes we make bad choices and there's another one coming up for me so she calls yay and yay is like driving down to sam's club on highway 95 and she's like where is it i'm gonna turn around and get him like you don't need to freak out you don't need to turn around and go get the bed or anything like if it's not there it's not a big deal we don't really need it i was just thinking it was 150 dollars for a sleep number with two remotes that's not a bad deal and so of course she turns around and she goes to the estate sale 
There we go. This sold this ping bag. Ping bag. Got it at a uh, flea market for 40 It was not as good as I thought. I kind of miscomped it. I'm still learning golf bags. I sold it for 100 plus ship. Uh, but the problem is that I have to buy a $7 box, which puts my buy cost at 47 And then fees on 100 140 really, because of the shipping. Shipping probably will only cost me 20 even though they paid 40 30 They paid 30 It says ship. No, it says shipping will cost me 30 actually. Yeah, so I'm not going to make any money on the shipping, but I will pay fees on the shipping nonetheless. Thank you, eBay, for that. Which, by the way, we need to talk about eBay shipping nonsense. Actually, that's going to probably be the main plot of this. I'm not like Kevin thinking of the plot ahead of time. I think of it as I go, but I should talk about that because that's ridiculous. So my fees are going to be like 20 bucks on this sale. Sold it for $100, $50 investment. So I make 30 bucks. 30 bucks on the golf bag, which it's not... It's not hard. I listed it and it sold in a week, so I guess it's not a bad thing, but it's not It's not a great flip. $100 is what it sold for, though. That's the moral of the story. If you see that golf bag for two bucks, definitely pick it up. That's my point. Anyways, yay, it gets there. The bed is still there. Once she's there and she's, you know, my mom's sister, so she's loud. She's bringing attention to it. Everyone now realizes this bed is there and now everyone wants it. And she's calling me at a yard sale. I'm like, yeah, at 150 bucks, I'll take it. Like, just buy it. <laughs> but her and my mom are like going off on this tangent. Like, send me a pic. My mom's like, send me a picture of it. I don't believe it's a sleep number. I'm like, mom, I saw it with Tina yesterday. It's definitely a sleep number bed. Like, you don't need to worry about it. She's like, it just doesn't make sense. How is it so cheap? I'm like, it's a good deal. I don't know. And uh, anyways, all that was to tell you that my productivity, we were talking about productivity. I just want you to understand how my brain goes in these circles. Productivity was damaged yesterday too, because after Saturday yard sales, I often come home and list a lot of my Saturday finds. But instead I had to go with my dad, get the trailer, pick up the bed, bring it into the house, install it, get it all set up. And that ended up taking quite a bit of my day yesterday. So literally all that was to tell you, I haven't really been productive since Disney. I've done like minor listing, basically no editing, a tiny bit of editing. I think I edited one video, but I've had a good couple days nonetheless. I've had a lot of fun and we did go yard sailing and got a lot of cool stuff. I probably sourced over a thousand dollars worth of stuff yesterday. Um, so that's always a good thing. But I want to talk about eBay because eBay is doing something that is a little bit annoying. You know, I'm not going to like say it's the worst thing ever. It doesn't actually affect me that much, but it does affect me a little bit. These are the clubs I sold. I sold this as an iron set. I was kind of shocked because it's a bad brand. Bazooka. I normally will not pick up Bazooka, but it is uh, Ironwood Tour Edge, I believe it's called. Tour Edge Ironwood uh, Bazooka set. And they have really, they're nice condition. It's seven clubs. Actually, I sent Kevin's uncle, Uncle Steve, the comp. He's like, how did you sell that? And I sold it in like a day. So it might be like the one sneaky good set of bazookas that exist. And I got that in a big bulk buy. You know, it came with a bunch of pings and Mizunos. So I was like, yeah, I'll take that too. But uh, I don't know, maybe my cost was five bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks for the set. Maybe I uh, sold it for a hundred dollars plus shipping over on eBay. So hundred dollars, that's $200 sales in a row. This is Friday, right? Where everything is selling is a hundred dollars, hundred dollar golf bag, hundred dollar iron set. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And then of course there was a couple non hundred dollar things, but then some more. So you you'll see, just stand by. Okay, so eBay is instituting a change. The change is this. This is weird. They're going to force everybody to do the discounted rate shipping on eBay. So you have a choice, and a lot of people may not even know this. You have a choice with eBay setup where you can say retail price for shipping or my discounted rate for shipping to the end user, to the buyer. Right. So the buyer can come in, look at Dave's listings and say, oh, it's $30 to ship this giraffe, this big giraffe, right? That could be the retail rate. Or I can give them my discounted rate. Let's say with eBay's UPS discount, it's only going to be $20. I can have it display $20 and charge the customer $20. Now, a lot of eBayers will show the discounted rate to be competitive in shipping pricing. So people say, ooh, I want that golf club, but Uncle Steve's selling it and it's $15 shipping. Dave is selling it at $6 shipping because I'm showing the discounted rate. So then I might get a competitive advantage and get the sale. Yes, I'm earning less money, 100%. I'm earning less money by doing that, but it is actually what I do. I show the discounted rate. It's not that common. Most people on eBay show the retail rate. I sold a, st sold a Stanley. I paid too much for this. I paid 10 bucks for it because it was a Stanley and I was like Stanley hyping. Uh, it sold for 20, so. I learned something about Stanley flipping, which I didn't know much about it. So at least I made a little pro and I learned a little something. So most of you probably, cause the default has always been to just show the retail rate and you sometimes earn a little money on shipping, right? It's like, Ooh, a little treat. I earned a little money. Is this one that sold? So that's like the common thing. Well, eBay has sent out an announcement saying that they are going to now always as a default, 
show the discounted and charge the discounted uh, shipping rates to customers on eBay. Even if you already have it set up to show retail rates, they're gonna go in and change it. They're literally gonna change it to the discounted rates for you. And the problem with that is the discounted rates are not always right. There's several times where I lose, lose a little bit of money because they've done that and they calculate it wrong. And so then I've lost a little money. Well, so their new policy is they're literally gonna change it, guys. So you're about to earn less money on shipping unless you go in and change it back, basically. You have to either opt out or change it back before they do it. I don't know the exact date, but it's coming soon. Like I think in May or something. Yeah, so I thought I should let you know that. I don't really think that's cool of eBay. I think that uh, the way they have it now where it's your choice should be the way they do it. And they shouldn't go in and change everyone's without ask, like without a consent first. Right, like they're saying you can opt out, but they should have said, do you want us to do this, yes or no? And then like let people say yes or no, and if they don't respond, just don't do it. That's my opinion, because you're literally changing everyone's you know, earnings and stuff without their knowledge if they don't read that email, or if they don't watch this really useful video by ADH Dave. All right, I sold this, The Catholic Family Book of Novenas by uh, 1956, the year my mom was born. Sold that for $31. $4 shipping, got that out of a book box at a sale that like literally no one wanted to be at because there was nothing there. I was like, I'm gonna find some profit in these books. And I pulled out like a hundred bucks worth of books for five bucks. So I did, I did okay. And that was one of them. Okay, onto the big items that I'm real stressed about shipping today. This is gonna consume a lot of my productivity today, shipping some of these things like the golf bag and uh, this item. So this sold, this is a Red Bull cooler. I sold it for $215.99. The buyer paid $70 to ship it, I think, 60 or 70. Uh, it's yeah, $60 to ship it. Uh, UPS ground, I hope. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Dollar Tree and buy some pool noodles and get it in a box and like wrap it in pool noodles because that's how I received it. I bought it on Whatnot from Art of Resale. He, he ran it as a joke and I bid on it 60 bucks or whatever. And I got it, so hey, you know what Art? I made some profit off that. I paid you 60 uh and shipping i was at free shipping already and i sold it for 220 so i will make some profit on that thank you art of resale he just didn't want to store it i'm so excited when big stuff moves because it gives me space space makes a dave happy okay uh but speaking of big items that's not the only big item that sold for 200 dollars. i have another huge item that i'm very excited to see out of here and it's our friend joanne c mitchell's bear you know the lady who was complaining to me about how i didn't comb the bear well the bear sold joanne you finally don't have to worry about it anymore we're shipping out the bear 260 dollars i took a best offer it was a low ball offer i had it listed 400 but i was like yeah that's fine 260 let's do it get that big bear out of here it's taking up a lot of space and i'd rather have 260 dollars than that bear pretty excited now if you remember i paid what did i pay three or four hundred for all the bears Hmm, I can't recall right now. Some of you might know, comment below. Do you remember, did I pay three or 400 uh, for all the bears? Or maybe 350, somewhere in there. I could just, I could just title every episode. What did I pay for this? <laughs> Cause I never know. Okay, here we go. Tater bin time guys, tater bin. I sold the tater bin that Dawn told me to buy for 10 bucks. And I think it was worthwhile. It's gonna be hard to ship, but here it is. Tater bin, big old tater bin. You got the onion drawer, taters go. Oh, in here. This is cool. People collect these. They like these. They're very uh, cottage core aesthetic, as my daughter would say. Sold that for $110 plus shipping. And I think the buyer, how much did the buyer pay to ship that? $33.71. So this is kind of something I've decided to own and to be okay with. And that is big item. A lot of resellers, you know, even like in my close circle, carry. Kevin, they don't love, uh, Kevin's okay with it. But Carrie's a good example of people who just don't wanna buy big stuff. They don't wanna ship big stuff. They don't wanna deal with big stuff. But what that means is there's a lot of big stuff out there that people are leaving, even though they know it's profitable, like a tater bin, like a giant polar bear, like a Red Bull. If you're willing to like deal with that stuff and ship that stuff, there's a lot of money to be made. I wanna know your thoughts on the eBay change the shipping change. Are you cool with it? Are you gonna leave it at the uh, the discounted rate? Or are you gonna change yours back to retail rate? Because now all the competition is gonna be at discounted rate whether they like it or not. And they might not know to change it. So all of a sudden your price might be too high. Is this a response to Mercari by eBay, do you think? Like they're concerned about Mercari and so they're trying to make sure their stuff's way cheaper than Mercari so Mercari doesn't steal market share. That's possible. Either way, I wanna know what your thoughts are. Oh, you know what? I have <laughs> Mercari sales. Let me not end the episode yet. Let's pull my Mercari sales because I do have a couple decent Mercari sales. $1,361 sold over on eBay. So $1,300. And then on Mercari, let me get in there. Cross-listed with Vendu, as, of course, as always. Cross-listed with Vendu. 
use my vendu uh use my vendu link to save money uh what did i not ship yet two items sold on mercari all right bin six yeah these will be easy to pull too so out of bin six we sold a watch that i got at the flea market i paid like 20 bucks for three watches and i already sold the halo one for like 40 a while back and now this one sold for 15 is it this one is it the rebel alliance it's one of these star wars watches let me just take a look here yeah rebel alliance 17 dollars over on mercari let me show you what it looks like it's pretty cool not worth a ton it was like a walmart item but you know if you want an analog wristwatch it's kind of a neat item and then i sold this which is a salt and pepper shaker actually that i got recently it's a little grape salt and pepper shaker i paid a dollar for it i believe and uh it's from france no japan from japan that's a cool salt and pepper shaker sold that on mercari as well how much did i get for it let's go take a look 25 dollars plus shipping on the salt and pepper shaker i don't know at least those will be easy to ship it's gonna be chaos to try to ship the rest of this stuff wish me luck today guys anyways that's it that's all the sales so what is that like 1400 dollars worth of sales over the weekend not bad with uh, my slacking off i did with the the theme park and stuff but it was good to take a break and sometimes like i said you gotta let yourself have a rest for your mental health i think um monday tomorrow i plan on getting really heavily back into work so it'll be nice to get that all done all right guys thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you subscribe we'll see you next time